Welcome back, Blade fans. This old sword here. Bringing you yet another new knife. This one hit yesterday. And you might recall, this looks familiar, that I did a similar review. This is the Hogue K320. It is uh, a companion in a sense, to another Hogue. These are Hogue SIGs, by the way, made by Hogue with the SIG name on them. Oh. Helps to take the safety off. So you see the top one is the K320A, the automatic version, with the drop point. And the bottom is the K320 with the Tonto point. Same exact handle, same almost blade configuration, except we have a chisel ground Tonto on this manual Able Lock version. So this is the Hoag's version of Benchmade's famed Axis Lock, which had gone off of copyright not too long ago and other companies are able to make similar locking mechanisms. Let me give you a few specs on this particular one from Blade HQ and I have verified that these are accurate. If you find any discrepancies let me know. The blade length is three and a half inches Cutting edge, 3.125 inches, due to that pronounced choil that we'll look at in a minute. The blade is CPM S30V. The blade style is Tonto. It's hollow ground. Finishes a black Cerakote, which um, they have their own name for. Let's see if I can find that in a little bit. The handle length is 4 and 3 quarter inches. Handle width. 1.25 inches. That's not thickness. Handle thickness is 0.57. Material in the handle is a polymer, and it's a very special polymer. I wouldn't call it FRN by any stretch of the imagination. It's much harder. I have it on several Hogue knives, and it's uh, they even have videos with... Uh, trucks running over these knives and the mechanism still holding up. It's a very, very tough plastic, if you will. Model, model number on this one is 36360. It's made in the USA and it's considered to be a tactical use knife. And I think we missed the weight. Let me see if I can get you the weight. 4.18 ounces. 4.18. Okay, so what we have is a very comfortable, usable EDC. We have lots of jimping here built into the frame of the uh, knife, wrapped in the uh, polymer handles. We got a little bit of jimping up here on the blade, which has a pretty good amount of grip as well. Have a really nice usable choil. Got a little bump there. Some people aren't going to like it aesthetically, but usefully, you're not going to run your finger onto the edge. And no, it doesn't give you a really neat um, termination of the edge for sharpening. But you know, you got to give up some things to get other things in some cases, right? Really nice, even black coat. There is your back out just a little bit. I have trouble when I zoom in too far as far as pulling focus on this uh, particular camera I'm not using a cell phone uh, I'm a photographer by trade in the distant past and um, most of my stuff is cameras I don't use my phones for things other than what phones are used for Sig Sauer um, K320 and this is supposed to be a tactical military type uh, counterpart 
to, I believe, the Model 17 U.S. Army pistol. And I don't know the exact designation of that off the top of my head, but the uh, civilian version is called the P320. So this is the K320. P for pistol, K for knife. You guessed it. Have a seam down the back where the two halves join together. Oh yes, and as with the auto version, a very interesting deep carry clip with these raised scallops on it that give you very good purchase and the ability to pull it out of the pocket. Other than that, it is not much different than the auto counterpart, which again, I did a full review on, but we'll give you one more look at them both. Both three and a half inch blades. Interestingly enough, they kept the cutout for the flipper, not flipper, but the opening assist. Flick it open very nicely using um, both a thumb flick and a spidey flick. You can get it back in like that. You got to pull back. One thing I noticed, the able lock, as Hogue calls it, has a little more spring tension than most of the Benchmades that I have and have used. Could be that it's new, I'm not sure, but just a, I got to use both fingers to pull back. If I use just a thumb, I can get it back, but not all that well. So I, use, I pinch it back with both fingers and you can get it back in that way. You can uh, use your other hand if you wish or the side of your leg. It's a very handy lock. Comes out smoothly. I believe, let's see what the stats say. I believe it's running on washers and not bearings. And I'm going to stick with that. I can't find anything to the contrary. When I looked down inside, I saw what looked like brass bushings, but very often bearings have that same look. See if we can get you a look down inside there. It's a little too bright. You might catch a glimpse of a little bit of uh, a brass look down in there. I'm pretty sure that they're a very smooth washer system and not bearings. Uh, it's not too often you see bearings on the axis type lock. So excellent grippy texture that they cast into the side of this polymer handle. Got some up top there, over on the side. It will disassemble. You have what appears to be T8 Torx. Got a lanyard hole. And let's quickly look at it. Next to the Benchmade, Benchmade? Ontario Rat 1. And the Benchmade Griptilian. Pretty much the same size as a Griptilian, if you know that knife. Both in blade and handle. I feel it's a great EDC knife. Um, I've got a number of autos. They're not really something I carry that often, although I may carry an auto around the house. But... Here's the manual version. So you can get this in either a Tonto or the drop point. Should be legal in your area. Three and a half inches is pretty modest, not, uh, certainly not over four. You might perhaps live in an area where you've got to have under a three inch. I am not sure. Depends upon where you are. The Tonto, uh, the chisel point Tonto, as I call it, the Americanized Tonto, can be a useful blade. Uh, it's not going to have the belly that is on the drop point. Drop point blade has 
generally speaking, a little more use for cutting. And the Tonto probably is perceived to have a little more use as EDC and tactical. Maybe a little more pronounced point. And you have that secondary cutting point, which, you know, for scoring, cutting leather, paper, cardboard, actually comes in pretty handy. I like the size of it. I like the fact that you can easily choke up in that finger choil. It's a useful finger choil. It's not just a decoration. And it um, opens up smoothly. It closes smoothly. Really kind of a neat knife. Uh, lightweight, right about four ounces. So, you know, coming up on three and a half inch blade, four ounce knife. You're pretty close to that uh, ounce per inch so-called rule. But as I was saying, um, with the blade shape, I uh, won't get too into it, but you know, the traditional Tonto is not this Tonto. The traditional Tonto, if you look at some of the creations of James Williams, you'll see more of that traditional um, gradually tapering point uh, of the uh, Japanese Tonto and its variants. Now, this is a variant that goes back to like the early 80s where Lynn Thompson decided to put uh, more or less a ninja style point onto a knife and call it a Tonto. And as far as I know, he was the first or one of the first to do that. Uh, you see it more on some so-called ninja swords, um, supposed to be armor piercing, be a little tougher, but, you know, that's all up for debate because the traditional Tonto is also a very good penetrator, especially with a more slender tip. As I said, check out some of uh, James Williams' knives, uh, some of the ones he made for cricket, and some of the ones he's now making under his own name, which are uh, very, very nice. I hope to get one one of these days. So, hope you enjoyed that. This is the Hogue K320 Tonto with an able lock, S30 V blade, and a nice little EDC. I'm going to try EDC in it around the next few days, and I'll get back to you and let you know how it does. Hope you like this video and subscribe. Great being with you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.